House County Affairs Committee had state demographer Carl Eschbach come before the committee this week and testify about population trends in the state of Texas. Now there were some certain things that he said that I think are very important for Farm Bureau members and folks in rural Texas to know. Mr. Eschbach informed the committee that 113 of Texas's rural counties are actually losing population and also the five largest counties now hold half the population of the state of Texas. Why is this important? Population means political influence. Almost every issue the Texas Farm Bureau is currently facing at this point in time is because of the population trends in the state of Texas. So you can just imagine that if 113 of our rural counties are actually losing population while the suburban and urban areas continue to increase in population, that's going to mean that we're going to have some real challenges in the future. And that's one of the reasons why getting eminent domain passed this legislative session is going to be so important. In last week's video, I'd ask you to contact your legislators to ask them to co-sign Senate Bill 18 and House Bill 1483. Very much appreciate those of you that did. We need to get to 100 co-signers in the House and 21 in the Senate to override any potential veto. We already have eight senators, and that's terrific, although we still don't have much response in the House. I'd still like to encourage you to go ahead and contact your legislators, and an easy way to do this is to utilize the CapWiz program provided by Farm Bureau. Go to the home page of Farm Bureau, and that's txfb.org, and it's at the top right of the page. Or if you're viewing the video right now on the Farm Bureau site, it's just above this video. Click on the link, it will take you to Action Alert, Please co-author eminent domain reform. Click on that link and follow the simple instructions. If you do have difficulties, we do have detailed instructions on how to do this on last week's video capital update. On the bottom right of the video is a box and it reads more video. Click on that box and then click on week six of the video update and follow instructions provided by Billy Howe. I told you last week that I'd come back and visit with you on a meeting that I had planned with the new House Transportation Committee Chairman Joe Pickett from El Paso. I visited with him on Tuesday in depth about several of the Farm Bureau's legislative priorities for this legislative session, in particular the repeal of the Trans-Texas Corridor and also naming affected property owners as mandatory members of advisory segment committees through the Department of Transportation in law. Those two main transportation issues were discussed in length and the chairman was amenable to our positions and urged us to work very closely with the other 10 members of the House Transportation Committee. I've already met with uh, several of those and have many more meetings already scheduled for the upcoming week so that I can continue educating those members on Farm Bureau's legislative priorities. House Bill 979 by Representative Eddie Lucio III from San Benito and House Bill 1427 by Dwayne Bohack from Houston deal with establishing a biomass ethanol motor fuel tax exemption. These bills exempt cellulosic ethanol from the state motor fuels tax. Farm Bureau supports better incentives for the production of renewable energy use and tax exemptions for fuel or energy derived from agriculture products. And as such, Farm Bureau will support this bill and will continue to follow it through the process. Lastly, as you know, Farm Bureau has been working for several years now to allow a landowner the option of selling development rights or an easement before condemnation occurs. Along these lines, Senator John Corona from Dallas has introduced SB 448. This measure specifically authorizes TxDOT to mitigate adverse environmental impacts resulting from the construction or maintenance of a state highway. As proposed, SB 448 authorizes TxDOT to transfer any interest in real property, such as an easement, to an appropriate public agency or private entity. Farm Bureau likes this bill because the landowner can retain their land and continue to farm or ranch, rather than TxDOT coming in to condemn that property. Well, one transportation committee member, Senator Elliot Shapley from El Paso, has raised a concern with the term appropriate and feels that it should be better defined before the bill is further considered. Thus, SB 448 was left pending in the Transportation Committee and will be reconsidered at another time in order to continue through the legislative process. Farm Bureau supports this bill and will continue to help it through the legislative process and will report back to you soon on that. 
got our first agriculture committee hearing in the House in Austin this week. Uh, Commissioner Staples testified on behalf of the Texas agriculture industry in the Department of Agriculture. Uh, went through some of the challenges that we have and some of the opportunities that he sees us having down the road. We also had the Office of Rural Community Affairs testify before the House Agriculture Committee and they talked more on a rural uh, economy, the communities in, in rural Texas, how things are faring there, some of the projects that they're working on, uh, some of the projects they're working on in hand with the federal government as well.